Hello friends, in this video we shall see the different server tracking mechanism that a servlet based application can take. So, session tracking in servlets. You know that the servlets follow a HTTP protocol, a specific type of servlet which is called as HTTP servlet follows a HTTP protocol which is stateless. Each time a client retrieves a certain web page in the web application, it opens a separate connection to the web server. Server does not keep any track of or any record of the previous client request automatically. By default, it does not store any information about the earlier request sent by the client. So, how to keep track of this information that is done by four different ways following ways are there to maintain the session between what is the session session is a basically a duration the duration of time between the first time the user comes into contact with the server and either he logs out or the browser is closed down so that duration is called as a session so some data you, which you may want to you know maintain or hold all throughout the session that can be done by these four different ways one is the use of cookies other is use a invisible or hidden form field third is url rewriting and fourth of course is a http session the object of http session interface so let us see one by one how the cookies are used to maintain or record the session then form field and uh, url writing rewriting and session http session first is session management using a cookie we have seen what is a cookie it is the data that is transmitted by the server into the client machine so in addition to the regular cookies like name age etc the server will transmit a special cookie which will assign a special session id which is attached to the session id variable and the value uh, 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 you know assess, assigned or associated with it that will be stored inside the client client's machine and when the next time or subsequent visit is done by the client that will be transmitted using which the using the session session id trans, uh, you know transmitted cookie the server can keep track of the number of visits that a particular client has done or something like that that is the mechan that is one mechanism of maintaining a session but then sometimes this mechanism may not be very effective especially if your client browser does not support cookies or the cookies have been disabled in that case this method will fail okay but otherwise if the cookies are enabled and the browser does support the cookies then this can be one of the ways in which the session can be maintained second roundabout way of you know managing the session is using a hidden form field you, you have to create a form for the user to fill the data html form along with the name and other attributes that the user will fill up inside the form uh, that the user is given to and he will submit the data and the data will be sent as a request object and from which the the request will be processed by the servlet okay so in addition to the normal or regular fields or regular attributes a form element will have you have to provide another very special type of form field called as input type is equal to hidden that means this form field will not be displayed or will not be visible on the form that will not be displayed but it does have a certain name called a session id and value some arbitrary value can be assigned to this so what happens when this form is submitted along with the other other data this session id will also be a part of the query string the servlet can retrieve that session id and do whatever session management activity that it has to do so that is another technique using the hidden form field 
Now, this is very especially useful if even if your client browser does not support the cookies or cookies have, have been disabled in spite of that, this method can be used. Third, you, third mechanism is URL writing, rewriting. Means what? You can append some extra data in addition to whatever data that the client has client is sending. And that additional data will form the session ID. Say for example here, if this is the URL that is submitted by the client, so file.htm, if, if at all there are any more uh, you know key and value pair, they, they are anyway attached to the uh, URL by question mark. Additionally, session ID is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for example, is attached to this. So, when this URL is you know visited this part becomes the query string from that query string this session id can be separated and can be used for tracking purpose this is another way this is a, this is a better way to maintain the sessions even if the browsers do not support the important and very effective way of handling sessions is the http session interface the servlet container or web container uses this interface to create a session between the HTTP client and the server. The session persists for a specified period of time, you can specify for how much time the session has to be persisted with. The object of HTTP session can be used to perform two tasks. One is bind certain objects to the session and view and manipulate the information about the session such as the session identifier, time of creation of the session, uh, last accessed time, time of logout, etc. All these information can be processed or persisted with or stored using the session object. So, how to do this? How to obtain the HTTP session object? The request interface methods to give the object of HTTP session. It is a, it is available or it can be accessed using the request interface. For example, HTTP session get session method is there. Using this get session method, this returns a current session associated with the request or if the request does not have any session creates one. If you invoke this get session method, what is the session associated with the request that will be returned? If there is no or if there is none, then it will create a new session. Okay. Another variation of this get session method is also available. It takes one argument boolean create. That means it will be either true or false. By default it is true. That means it will become like this only. Without any parameter means it is true. Right. That means what? If it is exclusively explicitly written as false, then if it does not return any session, it will not create new. You see, when it does not have any parameter, it creates a new session if there is not present one. If you explicitly write false as a parameter to the get session method, what will happen? It will create, it will not create a new. If it is not present, it will not create a new. So, these are the two methods which will help you to obtain the object of HTTP session. These are the different methods which can be used along with the HTTP session object. Get attribute, set attribute and remove attribute. As the name is uh, you know suggestive, you can set an attribute to the session obtain the value associated with an attribute and remove the attribute. Get attribute names, all the attributes that are bound to a session object, the list of or the enumeration of all the objects, attribute objects can be uh, obtained by the get attributes, get attribute names method. Get creation time returns the time this session was created it is measured in milliseconds and the milliseconds 
after the epoch time that means first january 1st 1970 from that point onwards from that point onwards how many milliseconds have elapsed at the time of creation of a, of that particular session get id will give you the session id associated with the current session get last access time will return the last time the client had accessed uh, or uh, send the request associated uh, to this session that is also measured in terms of milliseconds since the epoch time maximum inactive interval returns the maximum time interval in seconds not milliseconds in seconds to keep this session open between the client accesses that means what if the client accesses or sends a request for a particular resource on the server and then sits idle for a certain interval of time how much time can be allowed to elapse for the session to remain intact after a particular in interval of time the session will be automatically deleted or destroyed so what is that time maximum inactive interval in invalidate the session will be deleted session will be removed and all the objects that are bound to it will also be uh, you know unbounded is new it returns true if the client does not yet know about this current session or the uh, the client has chosen not to join the session whether it is new or not these are all the methods that are associated with the http session objects using these methods you can perform different kinds of activities so what we shall do now we shall i i'll show you a netbeans project which is exclusively or uh, written to show the mechanism or methodology of this http session wherein the different time different users when as as they log into the application the number of you know users that are that have been logged in how many current number of users are there that will be shown as the counter how many total users even if the user has logged out he will be counted as the user and how many current users are there you will see that when the a log out takes place the amount or the count will decrement as the login takes place the amount will increment so that we shall see with the help of an example you know displaying the mechanism of all the http session objects so this is an example of uh, http session interface the project name itself is a session example there are three html files index.html is the welcome file of the project and then there is a login and menu.html so index.html contains hyperlinks to three urls login.html then this logout text is linked to the logout url which is mapped to this logout.java and uh, the third url a third link is leading to the profile.java so this is the profile.java right login.html if you click on this link this login.html will be open contains a form with two form elements type is equal to text name is equal to user type is equal to password name is equal to password and the data is posted to this url login login url is mapped to the login.java servlet okay so this is the login.java and the third web page is menu.html again the same menu is being you know presented to you whenever the menu.html will be uh, you know opened in the browser this is the web uh, or rather html part of our project login.java is the one that will be first invoked as soon as you the client rather enters the username and password it will go to the login.java and be, because the method is post i am overriding the do post method so after setting the content type and obtaining the print writer object what is done the contents of this menu.html are included in this servlet what is there in menu.html there is simple menu with three hyperlinks so those three hyperlinks will be presented on the top afterwards from the request object it will 
fetch the values associated with the parameters username and password that means the data entered in the in the login form those will be stored in the name and password string variables if this password is equal to admin then what what does it do it starts a session by request dot get session and sets the attribute to the session object as name the attribute called as name having the value equal to name which is fetched from the request dot get parameter right if it is not i mean if the password is not admin then this part will be executed else it will you know generate a certain response like sorry username or password is error or wrong and then the contents of this login dot html will be included in this response so that means what happens the login dot html contains a form so the form will reappear right so this is what is done by this login servlet if you click on the logout link either through the index or through this uh, menu this will be executed logout in this logout servlet there is a do get method which is overridden because it is not going to be called by the post method what do you do you include the contents of the resource called as menu.html to generate the menu the three hyperlinks on the top and then because you are clicking on logout that means what you have to destroy the session session dot invalidate will disconnect or destroy the session object and a response will be generated as you are successfully logged out so on the on your client page what happens what will happen there will be a menu and below which there will be a message you are successfully logged out this is what happens when uh, the user clicks on logout link and if it if he clicks on profile this is the content of the profile servlet it will also be called by the get method so again the contents of menu will be displayed the three hyperlinks then again the session object with the false you know argument is given to this remember what happens when you give the argument false to this get session if the session is not created it will not create a new session if there is no session then if the if 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 the session is not null that means if the, if there is a session then it will find out what is the value of the attribute called as name and it will print it out in addition to that i have just written some place holders for email contact number if the, if at all there it is this kind of data is available somewhere maybe in the database or something like this it may be fetched from there and printed we are just creating a uh, you know, sample or prototype of a profile page only the name is will be displayed these will be blanks okay so this is what the profile will do so this is the entire you know exercise or activity that is going on in this project what we will do we will run this project starting from the index we will open the login form give the password as admin then see what happens if you do not give the password as admin see what happens and then we'll go to the profile etc all the activities we shall demonstrate uh, by running this example